Let's get the show started, shall we? Live from BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver, it's the 29th Annual Miracle Weekend. Yes, welcome inside BC Children's Hospital. You know, this place serves one million children living in BC and the Yukon. They treat the severely ill kids, of course, but they also take care of all those smaller things like the bad ear infection that happens at 2.30 in the morning or a broken elbow. Those things can feel like big things to little people, sure. I'm sure. So for the next four hours, all day tomorrow, we will give you an insight into so many heroic stories and how this hospital is such an important place to many families around beautiful British Columbia. We've got another donation from a financial institution. Thank heavens for groups like CIBC and Brianne Lentz. How did you raise some of this money? Um, it was really employee and client driven. Lots of employee engagement across the branches, bake sales, hot dog sales, raffles, silent auctions. It seems like a dedication that people really want to raise money for Children's Hospital. Absolutely. A lot of passion and dedication to the cause. And is this from across the province as well? Uh, it's across BC and the Northern Territory. So we have 170 branches and 3,000 employees uh, that essentially drove this. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this check if you want to flip it over. and $320,000. That's unbelievable. That's a lot of big here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you. BC Children's Hospital helps kids from every corner of this province. That's why BC's major banks and their employees all work together to support the hospital. Almost every community in the province has at least one bank that's fundraising for Children's Hospital. And there's definitely strength in numbers. Together, BC's major banks raise more than $2 million a year for BC Children's Hospital. Thank you to these banks for making a huge difference in the lives of BC's kids, past, present, and future. Thanks, banks. with a big gang from uh, the Banks Division. Todd Laycroft is uh, standing, by, standing by with me here. Todd, talk about teamwork here. There really is a, a large uh, group of people getting behind this initiative for you guys. Yeah, you know, we can be such uh, bitter rivals uh, competing in the marketplace, but it's just, uh, it's amazing how all of the uh, charter banks get together and we collaborate so well in BC to raise money for BC Children's Hospital. And how do you go about raising money? What sort of initiatives do you take on? Well, it's all employee driven at all of the banks. Um, uh, a, a lot of uh, creative of initiatives, uh, things like uh, talent contests get done. Uh, it's uh, it's quite a, uh, a, a grassroots initiative. Talent contests? What are you talking about? Oh yeah, well, Bank of Montreal has a talent contest. Oh, yeah? It's fantastic. All right. Okay, we've got. Uh, well, talk about teamwork here. We got a group of uh, kids in the front who are going to help us turn these cards. You ready? We're going to start off on this side here. Flip them over. Zero. zero. We got a zero. Seven. We got a seven. What do we have here? Another zero. Two, zero, zero, and the last one, two. An unbelievable total. That is teamwork. The Banks Division. Thank you so much, guys. Great job again. We are pleased to introduce you now to our 2016 champion child. I had a chance to chat with Aiden Chin earlier this evening. Five years ago, cancer tore apart Aiden's world and forced him into BC Children's Hospital for weeks at a time. But you know what? Cancer couldn't break the deep bond Aiden had with his brother and his friends. In fact, it did quite the opposite. I don't expect my cancer to come back. It's a new chapter in my life. I guess there is a sense of being a child, being a teen again. So there are times when I do feel free. I don't think I could ever fully go back to what it was like before. Brandon was seven years old and I was only 11, so we both were just kids, right? I had no clue. I, I, I heard the cancer word, I was just like, what is that? 
okay, maybe I'm gonna see him uh, tomorrow. My eyes kind of started opening up and I was just like, Aiden's not gonna be here for a while. I'm only gonna see him maybe a couple times a week. It just keeps on going to my head, like what if he was not gonna make it? What if I wasn't gonna see him at home anymore? There were times when I was feeling really sick and out of it and tired, and there were times when it wasn't always the chemo, it was about how other patients in the hospital were doing. You, you don't know what it's like, because I've been through so much pain, but I want to be here for two weeks. And they've been here for six months, you say? <laughs> And I was sad that there were other patients and there were other children that were younger than me going through cancers that were harder than mine. Basically from that point on I was like, why don't I try to get through it and then hopefully come back, help out. That's what I've basically been trying to do since uh, I finished treatment. I got to join this club at the hospital called the Oncology Teen Group Club. It's something that you can't find out of the hospital. As a survivor, I'm still part of the teen group. There's still a lot of support that I can give to them and they can give to me because there's an understanding that uh, treatment isn't over when you're a survivor. There's still um, an emotional side of things. You have friends that are going through it, friends that are, aren't going to make it through it, and that becomes a reality for you. It's not just over. Brooke was a friend of mine that I met in the hospital, and uh, she became basically a, um, a sister to me. Brooke was definitely the closest friend that I had that I lost. The day before she passed away, I did get to see her in the hospital, and I did get to hold her hand, talk to her, and say goodbye, and tell her I loved her one last time. And I don't believe that you can accept something like that. You have to, I guess, learn to cope with it more. Before, I felt like cancer was something that was rare, that one in a ton of kids would be diagnosed, but it's not rare, and there's a lot of kids in oncology, children that are going through what you went through, and pain that is um, unexplainable. I want to be able to give back to those that have helped me in the hospital, that have made it so that I can go out there and be active and just live my life again. It's a really good feeling that I could just go home and do something with my brother now. Without Children's Hospital, my brother wouldn't be here, so I'm eternally grateful for them being there. I'm looking forward to staying connected to the hospital because it's been such a big part. Giving back and uh, pursuing the dreams that I have and being able to do that because of BC Children's Hospital. America weekend coming to a close, but what a weekend it's been. It's time to check in for a big total, guys. It is. Let's so it. before we do this, though, I really would like to say thanks to all the volunteers working behind yeah. the scenes who helped us out. Um, yes. You've been amazing. Yes. Yes. It, really, it really is a cast of thousands. So do we want to do this right now? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's do it. All right. <laughs> let's turn the numbers. Okay. Zero, Zero. Six. Six. Eight. Eight. One. Whisper their prayers, take joy in knowing that everyone shares their faith and hope and love. Little ones laughing, lost in their play, through grateful eyes you can hear them say. Yes, they do. 
and some day what happens for you and the peace comes to you from above miracles happen with love miracles happen with love and with help from the angel and all of us miracles happen oh yes they do here's open some day what happens for you and peace comes to you from above miracles happen with love